welcome i welcome you all to this lecture in the course sandhi in paninian grammar we have been studying ach sandhi or vowel sandhi we said that the ach sandhi is classified into two broad groups the first one is ekasthanik ekadesh where you have one sthani and one adesh which means one substantive end and one substitute and we said that there are two instances of this type of ach sandhi and we are dealing with the first one over here in this lecture as well to show the nature of this sandhi diagrammatically we say that if we have a situation where a is followed by b in close proximity in the samhita mode then a is substituted by c a is the substantive end b is the right hand side environment and c is the substitute we said that the sutras in the text of ashtadhyayi dealing with ach sandhi can be classified into two groups the first one is from 6172 up to 6183 and the next one is from 6184 onwards so ekasthanika ekadesh is covered in this particular subsection 6172 to 6183 we also said that of the of this one type ekasthanika ekadesh the first instance is yan sandhi yan sandhi and the second instance is ayavayav sandhi in the previous lecture we studied certain basic features of yan sandhi the sutra which describes or prescribes the yan sandhi in the text of ashtadhyayi how its meaning can be made what are the other aspects which we need to closely study when we study yan sandhi in this lecture we continue to study yan sandhi in detail we expand the meaning of the sutra 6177 and so in doing so we ask the question what do ik yan and ach which are used in the sutra stand for we also saw how ik yan and ach get formed as pratyaharas using the technique of pratyahara stated by ashtadhyayi 1171 adirantyana saheta and then we know what ik yan and ach stand for so we have written that down on this slide ik stands for four vowels e u ru and lu yan stands for four consonants y w r and l and ach stands for nine vowels and we must remember here that we are referring to the sounds which are stated only in the 14 sutras 
So, E U Rulu are stated in the 14 sutras, Ya Varala are stated in the 14 sutras and in this case we also said that in the 14 sutras, Yan, Ya Varala are stated together with the vowel A. However, this A is there only for the sake of distinct comprehension of the features of these consonants and it is not part of yan. This is a traditional understanding. There is no explicit sutra composed by Panini to state the same. And then there are nine vowels, ach. Now the next question that arises is what is an uddeshya amongst these and which one is vidheya? It is important for us to understand this difference. The question would be what difference will answer to this question bring about or make? This is very important question. So we rewrite what we saw just now. We said that ik is uddeshya, yan is vidheya and ach is uddeshya. Uddeshya vidheya bhava is very crucial. Ik and ach they are uddeshyas and yan is vidheya. What it brings about is the following and here we deal with the sutra 1169 which says anudit savarnasya cha pratyayaha anudit savarnasya cha pratyayaha what this sutra means is that avidhiyamanaha an udit cha savarnasya saudnya syat so what it says is that an and udit which are not vidheya stand for their homogeneous sounds. What this sutra assumes is, the, is that the knowledge of an and udit is already there. Everybody knows what an is and what udit is and when they are vidheya and when they are not vidheya. So, an and udit act as uddeshya in this particular sutra and we say that when an and udit are uddeshya then they stand for their homogeneous sounds. When an and udit are vidheya then they do not stand for their homogeneous sounds. Vidheya is something that is stated anew, Uddeshya is something that is already known. Vidheya is stated with reference to what is already known. This Sutra 1169 is stating the representation of the homogeneous sounds as something new, not known before. And it is stating this with reference to an and udit, which is avidhiyamana. And so, an and udit act as uddeshya in this particular sutra as well. And what this sutra is saying is that when in similar situations, when an and udit are uddeshyas, they will stand for their homogeneous sounds. So, what are the homogeneous sounds? Let us study that. But before that, let us study what is an and what is with it. An stands for all vowels, also can be denoted by the term ach. Semi vowels, which can be denoted by the term yan and the consonant h. These sounds are stated from Sutra 1 
to 6 all of them they are referred to as un and this is something very special because the marker in a also appears in the very first sutra and so there is a confusion when the word un is uttered should it be taken as a pratyahara done by the marker in, a in the first sutra or should it be taken as the pratyahara formed with the marker in, a in the sixth sutra and there is no clear cut explicit answer to this provided by Panini. However, there are some implications and on the basis of these cues, the later Paninian grammatical tradition has decided, has made a rule saying that only in 1169 un stands for all these sounds. That means only in 1169 the pratyahara un is formed with the marker na which appears at the end of the sixth sutra. Everywhere else in the Ashtadhyayi, wherever you find the pratyahara un, it always refers to the first sutra marker na. This is the only case 1169 where un stands for all vowels plus semi vowels plus her thereby covering the first six sutras. This is the meaning of un and this is also summed up in a verse in the Paninian grammatical tradition which says purve naivan graha sarve pare naiven graha mataha rute nudit savarnasya eka eva pare natu. I repeat purve naivan graha sarve pare naiven graha mataha rute nudit savarnasya eka eva pare natu. Now let us look at udit. What is udit? Udit is an element which has ut that is sound u, vowel u as it, as a marker. So ku in which ka is the consonant with the marker u, chu in which cha is the consonant with the marker u, tu is ta with consonant u with marker u, tu having ta with the marker u and pu with pa consonant having the marker u, these are the udits, these are the references with u as the marker, ut as the it. So these are udits. So 1169 says that all uns as well as udits, that means all vowels plus semi vowels and her and ku, chu, tu, tu, pu, all these they stand for their homogeneous sounds. To put it in brief, we can say that this sutra then means that these sounds stated in the 14 sutras stand for their homogeneous sounds or savarnas. Now ik which is uddeshya as far as ikoyanachi is concerned, we know that ik is part of an and the, so when ik is uddeshya it represents the respective savarna homogeneous sound. Yan is vidhaya. Although yan is also part of an, now it will not represent the respective savarna homogeneous sounds because it is a vidhaya now. Similarly, ach, which is also uddeshya and also part of an also represents the respective savarna or homogeneous sounds. So what are the savarnas of ik? They are 66 in number in all. How? We have 18 varieties of e which are savarnas of e. How are they formed? 
there are six varieties of rasva e. So, rasva multiplied by three varieties of udatta, anudatta and svarita multiplied by two nasal, non-nasal varieties, anunasika and ananunasika varieties and that makes it six. Six short varieties of e. Then you have six dirgha, long varieties. So, the dirgha vowel into udatta, anudatta and svarita into anunasika and ananunasika. These are the six long varieties of e. And the finally, six pluta varieties. So, pluta into udatta, anudatta and svarita into anunasika and ananunasika. These are the six pluta varieties. In all, there are 18 varieties of E. And the sound E stated in the 14 sutras stands for all such 18 varieties. Similarly, U and Ru, which are part of Ik, they also have 18 varieties each. And so, together, they have 36 such varieties and E and U stand for their respective 18 homogeneous sounds. Lu also has similar kinds of varieties, however, Lu does not have a Dirgha variety. So, excluding those 6 Dirgha varieties, Lu has 12 varieties, 6 Rasva and 6 Plutha. All this put together, we can say that the Savarna sounds which are mentioned in the Pratyahara Ik are 66. In a nutshell, we can say that the substituents, the Sthani sounds are 66 on the whole. Now, if we talk about the right hand side environment, which is Ach, and what are the Savarnas of Ach? Following the same description that we saw on the last slide, we can say that A has 18 varieties, E 18, U 18 and Ru 18. 3 Rasvadirgha Plita into 3 Udatta Anudatta Svarita into 2 Anunasika Ananunasika, 18 varieties each and 4 vowels. So, in all there are 72 varieties. Lu has got only 12, 2 Rasva and Plita into 3 Udatta Anudatta Svarita into 2 Anunasika Ananunasika. So, there are 12 varieties. Then when we come to A, O, I and O, they have 12 varieties each. These 4 vowels, they do not have the Rasva variety, short vowel, they do not have. So, we have only Dirgha and Plutha 2 into 3 Udatta Anudatta Svarita into 2 Anunasika Ananunasika. So, 12 varieties each multiplied by 4 and we have 48 varieties of these vowels. All of this put together, we have 132 Ach vowels which are referred to in Iko Yanachi by the application of 1169. Now, if we take a relook at Iko Yanachi, we observe that Uddeshya Ik has got 66 sounds, Vidheya Yan has got just 4 sounds. Yan cannot stand for its representatives, homogeneous sounds because it is Vidheya. And Ach, which is the right hand side environment, which is also Uddeshya has got 132 sounds. No two sets have same numbers. Previously we saw that Ik has got 4, Yan has got 4 and Ach are 9 and therefore we said that the principle of Yathasankhya Nyaya works. 
the correspondence. However, after having expanded the meaning of the Sutra Eko Yanachi in this particular fashion where we applied the Sutra 1169, now we observe that Yatha Sankhya Nyaya cannot work now at least technically. Somehow you can say that well the Ik even though they are 66 in number but the ones that are mentioned in the 14 sutras which stand for these 66 are 4 and so we can still apply Yathasankhya Nyaya but that is not technically possible. You have 66 numbers of Ik and 4 numbers of Yan. So there is no Yathasankhya Nyaya that can work over here. Then what do we do? Then we use phonetic features as criterion for selection of a substitute. So in place of the 66 substituents, we have to select one of the four substitutes. And so we apply the criterion of phonetic proximity. This is an important criterion for selection of a substitute. This phonetic proximity is in terms of the place of articulation, namely sthana. Now, if we write down the sthanas of ik and of course of yants, we find that talu is the sthana of e and all 18 varieties of e. And similarly, talu is the sthana, the place of articulation also of ear. Oshtau, the lips, are the place of articulation of U and all 18 varieties of U and also of V. Murdhan, the roof of the oral cavity, is the place of articulation of Ru vowel and its 18 varieties and also R. Danta or tooth is the place of articulation of lu which has got 12 varieties and also of l. So now by applying the principle of sthana, sthane antaratamaha where sthana or the place of articulation acts as an important criterion for the selection of a substitute from amongst many we can then choose these substitutes ya in place of e, v in place of u, r in place of ru and l in place of lu in place of all the varieties of e, u, ru and lu. With this much information with us, let us revisit 6177. What is our input? The input is ik plus ach in the samhita mode in close proximity. And then we apply 6177 because the conditions are met, are fulfilled. And so then after the application of 6177, we get an output in the form of yan plus ach, in which we observe that yan is substituting ik. Yan is coming in place of ik. If we rewrite this rule after having known the application of 1169 we can write the rule in the following fashion. The input is ik which are 66 plus ach which are 132. The output is yan 4 in number plus ach which are 132. So there are these many combinations that are possible. So one amongst 66 and one amongst 132 and the resultant form would be 4 that is one amongst the 4 and this can be decided based on the place of articulation of this sound ik, the substituent and the match of it with this yan and one out of 132 remains in its place. There is no change in this. This is how 
6177 can be rewritten. Now, if we study closely, we notice that out of these 66 x sounds for 4 into 6 Brutta varieties. So, there are 4 vowels e, u, ru and lu and every one of them has got 6 Brutta varieties. 6, 1, 125 which is Brutta Pragriya Achinityam states the Prakriti Bhava with reference to the, those 24 varieties. What is a Prakriti Bhava? Prakriti Bhava is the absence of the Sandhi. You do not do the Sandhi. Let the sounds remain in the Prakriti. Prakriti is their own natural form. Do not change it. Do not modify it. That is the gist. So, 61125 says that the Plutha varieties, they remain in their Prakriti. That means there is absence of Sandhi. So then, we can remove these 24 from the list of substituents. And accordingly, we will have to revise now the substituents. Now, if we look at the ach sounds, which are 132, which are the right hand side environment, we observe that 54. That means 9 vowels and 6 plutha varieties each. They are stated in the grammar of Panini such that they cannot occur as the right hand side environment required for 6177. Plutha is stated only at the end of the sentence. Vakyasya tehe plutha udattaha and so on. So, the sutras of Panini state Pulita in such a manner that it cannot become the right hand side environment for this sutra 6177 to apply in general. And so, we remove those 54 sounds from the list of right hand side environments. So, now we have input ik plus ach Ach is the right hand side environment, ik is the substituent and ik is substituted by yan and this is the output. This can be rewritten as ik 66 minus 24 and we have only 42 varieties now, ach 132 minus 54. So, we have 78 varieties over here and this is an input and the output would be yan 4 and ach 78. Out of the remaining participants, following are stated to be inputs for another operation by 61101, Akas Savarane Dirgaha. The E 12 varieties, Raswa and Dirgha plus E 12 varieties. So, this E can be considered as part of Ik and these 12 varieties over here and this E can be considered as part of Ach, the right hand side environment. When the, this is the situation, of course, you can say that this is the condition for eco energy to apply, no doubt. But in this case, 61101 applies because of a special mention of the word Savarna. So, this E is Savarna with this E, and in this case, this rule applies. Similarly, U 12 varieties, Raswa and Dirgha plus U. 12 varieties Raswa and Dirgha and the resultant form is not what 6177 says, but the output the resultant form would be the one that is stated by 61101. Similarly, Ru and Ru, Ru 12 and Ru 12 and the resultant form would be the one that is stated by Akas Savarane Dirgha 61101. And similarly, Lu 6 and Lu 6 and the resultant form would not be the one that is stated by 6177, but it would be the one that is stated by 61101. 
we observe that there is an intersection of rules that is working here. This is what is called as interrelation of rules. So, Iko Yanachi and Akasavarni Dirghaha, they are sharing some of the scopes. So, the combination of Sthani and the Paradimitta partially is being shared by these two sutras. Similarly, we also observe that Iko Yanachi and Plutapragriya Achinityam, they are also sharing some scope of application. Iko Yanachi and Plutapragriya Achinityam are sharing the scope of Sthani over here and Iko Yanachi and Akasavarne Dirghaha, they are sharing the combination of Sthani and Paranimitta. And in both the cases, mention right. So, for example, in 61101, there is a mention of the word Savarna in Akasavarne Dirghaha. So, this mention of the word Savarna in Akasavarne Dirghaha 61101 makes its scope a subset of the scope of Iko Yanaji. Similarly, mention of the word Pluta in Pluta Pragriha Achinityam 61125 makes it and its scope a subset of the scope of Iko Yanachi and therefore in both these subset of scopes Iko Yanachi does not apply. It is these Akasavarani Dirghaha as well as Plutapragriha Achinityam these two sutras they apply in these subset of scopes. To summarize what we have studied, we studied how 6177 is interpreted in an expanded manner in the tradition of the Paninian grammar. This included the application of Anudit Savarnasya Chapratyayaha 1169 and also the interrelation of Akas Savarne Dirghaha 61101 and Plutap Achinityam 61125. This study of these different sutras and the expanded scope makes the scope of application of Iko Yanachi 6177 clearer. And now we shall study the examples, the individual cases. It may not be possible to study all examples where you have all 42 sthanis plus 70 odd paranimittas and four substitutions that may not be possible, but we shall try to study as many examples as possible. Thank you for your attention.